The mural is a bunch of ideas put together. It's not my mural, it's our mural. People are going to be seeing this, driving by, they're going to wake up to this, and it has to impact them. I'm very proud of it, and I hope that everybody is too. Create Future Good is a social enterprise that focuses on the rights of a child, on the well-being of children, and on children just simply being able to enjoy their childhood. Some students from Yale who were interested in exploring gender-based violence as it related to teenagers approached us and asked if we would be willing to collaborate on a creative project where we could address that specific issue. Gender-based violence isn't a term you hear thrown around the classroom in Trinidad or in, you know, like commonly um, in, in a lot of social settings. You don't hear people talk about gender-based violence. But it is huge and it is happening. I mean, we would hear things on the news. We would know what's going on. Um, but we wouldn't debrief, we wouldn't talk about it. It was a lot of hush-hush um, around these issues. I wanted to work on a workshop that would create a safe space for those conversations to happen. When this project came up, I was initially so excited to come. Because I was just like, finally, something is happening, something is being done. And it's not just like, it's people who want to take this by the reins. So the idea for the workshop was to see the problem, but then make sure that we're ending with a solution. The role of the artist is to make revolution irresistible, and that is what we are trying for here. We want change. People had a very in-depth knowledge, and we're really open to talking to others about like what they knew and listening to others about their experiences. Too. So we have to clearly define our purpose for what we're doing. Do we want to just simply express or do we want to assist in shifting people's perception of uh, attitudes towards gender-based violence at the teenage level? I didn't know much about gender-based violence, but I wanted to now.
mural will reflect your style and the messages will be whatever target audience will try exactly to target. What do you think your target audience is? When we start to look at the gender-based violence stuff, let's look at the solutions for teenagers. How can we now start to map out the change in behavior for us? Because it's such a broad issue, coming up with one cohesive image that could be put as a mural was pretty hard. The mural was separated into three stages. There was the problem and the issue stage, and there was the effects of the problem and the issue, and then there was the solution. We came up with some designs, and then we split into different groups and did the same thing again to try and refine it even more. various activities that allowed for discussion and they would discuss their individual designs and then other people would be able to give them feedback and then we'd talk about how we could incorporate it on a mural itself. The theme was coming in attack, right? It started off with the idea to be like a human staircase. Everybody doesn't start on a level playing field, especially with this kind of culture of silence around these issues. Not everyone has been able to have conversations at all about, about gender-based violence. And so we wanted to get a feel of what the participants knew themselves, what they were comfortable with discussing. They were like so good. They're like so, I definitely wasn't that um, aware of like gender-based violence when I was that age. The d group discussions that we have, they were like amazing. And I like learned from them and it was just a really great like experience. You have to give me this comfort. This is a million times stronger from these places is brilliant. A lot of them were trying to work through the issues themselves and were kind of leaning on each other to learn from one another and, and to, to really like figure out like what is gender-based violence, why is it important, why should we be having these conversations. The community of Beetham was a natural place to have the mural um, featured. 
We had everything from available wall space, businesses that supported us painting um, on their property, as well as the actual residents of the community, the IATF, the JCSC, they were all very supportive of us because we had worked with them before. The brilliant thing about Beetham as well is that the priority bus route is this naturally busy thoroughfare where thousands of people um, travel and commute every day and they would have been seeing the mural every single day. So we would have had high visibility as well as a safe community to work in while the participants were able to produce the mural. Everyone was really like ready to go and ready to make the mural happen and they kind of inspired me. <laughs> personal to me because like I'm not a, a gender conformative person like I'm gender fluid so at any point in time I could be either male or female or both or, or either so um, sometimes it's hard to like go out in public and you you know you have to meet certain expectations just to be able to live your life in peace um, so it would be really nice if I could help create some kind of change that would make it easier for me and people like me to live in this country. There was a lot of rain during the process. It was raining constantly. We had to run back and forth. There were times when we would sketch stuff out in chalk or paint it, and as the rain fell, it would wash it off. Yeah, one of the days um, when it was raining, right between the wall and the side of the road was the huge, like, kind of swamp, like, issue is sort of like a huge muddy puddle. But despite the weather, there was like this sense of camaraderie that I had with the other participants that really, really, really motivated me to just come out every single day. So the conditions aren't really favorable for painting a mural, but in the end, it, it's a really important issue that Trinidad has a culture of just silencing and uh, turning to forget about. There were a lot of reasons for people to be like, you know what, this is frustrating, I'm not going to come back tomorrow. But they did, they came back, and I think that is powerful. It was, it, it was a special um, thing to have among the participants that they, they were so committed to the cause. So right 
right now we're on stage two which is painting and all the detail and stuff and yesterday we painted and rain washed down every time we painted how lovely yeah? sun is really hot you know but we're committed you know we, we want to spread the message of gender-based violence to everyone in Trinidad so you can see this mirror and be aware that this is a serious problem in Trinidad and Tobago. I am being challenged to paint things I've never painted before and I'm being challenged to make sure that when this is finished it looks amazing. This is a new experience and working with everyone else has been quite fun and I really would like to get into another activity like this in the future. on the gender based part of the project so the hands on the piece are grabbing both um, the sides of the male and female to show that it's not just females get assaulted but males get assaulted as well for a group of us teens who basically now heard about the topic, who weren't really aware of it, that was very captivating. The community responded to the prom mural has also been really positive and I'm really happy that they like enjoy it and like are able to interact with it in that way. Well the project going on right now I find it very positive and the youths and keep them constructive. I really appreciate that what you all doing for the community. Make me feel a hundred percent better because we don't get it that way now. What you here looking? I know. To the painter now what you looking looking much better. I've been passing every day. And I realized the painting, so I stopped the other day and I told the people that are doing it that very good work. I think it's very creative and I hope it inspires some people or everyone to speak out against domestic violence, gender-based violence and violence in general. Yeah, we as a community need to come together and work together and better men for the, the children because when we go on them will be here. Not only is the mural creative and beautiful, but it is very inspiring. It has a very positive message. Seeing that the youths masterminded the whole settings, they brainstormed and came up with the idea to, to do this, right? I say and it is nice to know that they can use the mind power to do something as positive. It's a bit a message then, you understand, because some of the things you see you all put up there going on in, in hoods like these and you know you just can't come out and speak about it because you know certain things you know so that who understand it that come like a wake up call now by anything to do with art and culture will definitely have a message on the youths and on Trinidad and Tobago and the world in a whole yeah because there's there's a lot of negative out here yeah not just this community but throughout the land you know so anything positive being sent yeah yeah, I feel that. I hope people would stop and really take a good look at it and take the message in and I hope they go forward applying that to their lives and hopefully they speak out because you can save a life. I don't think there's any part that I love the best, you know. I don't think so. I cannot single out anything because it's a whole idea. You know, the idea and it comes in one package. Any circular violence. 
when it came to them expressing through their artwork and then eventually up on this amazing piece of wall, it was just simply amplified, not just for the communities and for the people who would have been seeing the piece of artwork, but you felt this growth of the participants during the period of the project because they were expressing themselves so confidently that you realize, wait, you're seeing something really magical here. We silent sufferers hold S in our pockets like sedatives. Shh. Stop silencing silent sufferers. Some slither to the asphalt and assume fault, or rather stinch away in a vault of self-suffixes. Fear. Full. We silent sufferers suffer because their silence as silent as siren through the sirens on the inside. We silent sufferers hold a stand still to show that we stand still. Having worked with young people in various contexts, this particular group that worked on the Gender-Based Violence Project uh, really stood out in terms of the amount of hope they gave for the possibility for positive behaviour change in regards to the improvement or the lessening of instances of gender-based violence. Understanding is, to me, in this workshop itself, that was like the major theme, understanding, because we had to understand what was gender-based violence. I feel like I really learned a lot and it gave me a different perspective on this issue as a whole. As I went through this workshop and we talked more, we were imparted the knowledge that the facilitators shared with us. I, learned, I thought about a lot of situations and I thought, oh, okay, I didn't think about this then, but maybe it's because I was socialized to think this way. From what this workshop has taught me, I want to be the kind of person that can stand up and say, this isn't right, you know. There are people who want to stand up for certain things, right? But they they're so afraid that they would get shot down. But like, once you realize, and you put yourself out there, they really, you realize that there are like so many people who have similar opinions and would back you up. I can say that I've learned to trust people more with my ideas, with who I am as a person, uh, with collaboration is hard for me, but this was a great experience to see that people aren't actively trying to fight against you, they're just trying to find the best solution that they can with you. This week, I've learned the most about myself than I've ever been about a year, and this project actually taught me to be more brave because people from away came and they asked um, for six people to sing with them at the concert, and this communicating with people, it brought out bravery in me and I raised up my hand and I put the sound with the people. I, I want everyone to believe in themselves as a creative and having artists potential because I think there's a, a lot of ideas where people just are discouraged from creating. Just the way that they were starting to interact with each other, that there was a change of language, there was a change of, of how they postured and held themselves. There was a sort of embracing and accepting over a period of time. Because it didn't start off that way, but by the end of the workshop, especially when we got to the review stages after we painted the wall, and they were reflecting on you know, how, how the project impacted them, you saw that there was a shift in behavior and that happened in a three-week period. I learned something about myself from this workshop that I could be my authentic self, I could be comfortable around people and not have to like apologize. At first I thought I wasn't really autistic at all but then I learned that I could actually draw if I take my time and put my mind to it. Yeah. I love that we collaborated and 
To me, that is what brought out even more from my artistry in writing as well. One thing we wanted participants to come away with too is that you don't need to have taken multiple art classes in order to consider yourself creative or to, to create anything at all, really. Like you can, you can sit down and you can have a piece of paper and a pen and just create in some way. If I was coming up with a design myself, it wouldn't have been exactly that. And I think that's the important part about it, that this design was all from the participants themselves. And I think that should be honored. I come in and learn to paint too. <laughs>